29 years ago, the Henrico Civic League, in conjunction with what was then known as the Henrico Ministers Fellowship, came together to be partners in a movement. A movement that would say to those persons in seats of power and authority in this county and in this state that we were displeased with something. And that was the failure to realize and to recognize that there has been a man of our hue and our ethnicity who was worthy of a national holiday. We believe to simply say that he was a great man and did great things was not enough. But that if we can give workers a day off to celebrate, in my understanding, traitors to the union, and erect monuments to their glory, then certainly there should be something done more than just a courtes courtesy mentioning of one who came to unite, to build, and to empower. So we realized that in order to make our voices heard and to make our desires understood, we were willing to pay a price. We were willing to make a sacrifice by keeping our children out of school. We were willing to take time off from work. And even if we did not have the annual leave where we could be paid, and even though our children may coveted that perfect attendance certificate at the end of each academic year, we believe there was something worthwhile of maybe losing a day's pay and having our children to not get their certificate. And we would come together throughout the length and breadth of this county to put in place educational experiences and spiritually stimulating situations whereby we would sing and we would pray and we would praise and we would thank God. Because yes, God has brought us a mighty long way. And it was brought by God's grace, God's mercy, but also on the backs and in the blood of persons who came before us. So in order for us to keep that dream alive, we persevered through the years until those in places of authority recognized that these folks are serious about this thing. And because of our seriousness, they ultimately heard our cry. And now we have been granted an opportunity to be out of school today, to be off of work today, and to assemble in places of our choosing today. But a strange thing happens sometimes. Sometimes when we are blessed to receive what we have so desired, we lose sight of how precious it has been. And we lose some understanding of how deep the struggle has been as well. So now we look around and we see that this has become a day for sleeping in for many, a day for honoring a sale at Macy's or at Dillard's or at some adjoining mall. For some persons who have been so economically blessed, today is a, a ski day where they go to Manson Nutton and they go to, go to other places to don their ski apparel and, and shush down the slopes. I'm reminded of a program that's on television now. Some of you may have heard of it's called Blackish. And there's a difference between being black and being blackish. And because of the struggles of those who've come before us, many folks now see themselves as blackish and not really knowing what it means to be black. For we know that black is not a color, but a state of being. 
a state of mind, an understanding of reality where blackish means that maybe by virtue of the pigment in my skin, I'm a little bit different from the one to my right or to my left, but, but at the end of the day, we're all the same. And in that program, there's a, a father who is blessed to be an advertising exec and, 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 a, and a wife who's a medical physician and, and children who are truly interesting. And what caused one of the children, the son, to recognize what it means to be black and to be discriminated against is oftentimes the focus of some of the episodes. But on one past episode, they were going skiing at this time of year. And most persons will go down the ski slopes on skis, but he's of this new generation. They ski board, yeah, snowboard. snowboard. Yeah. And he could not understand anything about the struggle, not about not being able to have first class accommodations in hotels, yeah. not about being able to drink from certain fountains or use certain restroom facilities. Yeah. But, but, but when it came to going to the ski, sleece, the ski slope, and realizing that an attendant there would say that only persons on skis can go down this hill and no persons on snowboards. That drove the point home for him. And we are blessed to have some young brothers and sisters among us today who really don't understand it until they're told that your snowboard cannot go down this slope. We want to make it plain to our young persons that as long as we have municipalities where there are grand juries who will not bring back indictments, as long as we still have policing practices that are truly barbaric and murderous when you look at them, as long as we have district attorneys, prosecuting attorneys, who oftentimes work in defense of the defense, as opposed to representing the will of the people, we've got to keep meeting. We've got to keep singing. We've got to keep showing up. We've got to keep on marching. And we've got to keep on giving. Because through our giving, we have supported persons like Supervisor Frank Thornton, who's now the chairperson in Henrico County of the Board of Supervisors. And the Reverend Tyrone Nelson, who's vice chair. It was through our gathering and our praying and our giving that we supported Frank years ago that's allowed him to remain around as a constant reminder that we are here and we're here to stay. So I come to you, my brothers and sisters, this morning to say that there's no such thing as a free lunch in life. Nothing is free. We say salvation is free, but oh my Lord Jesus paid a price. He suffered, he bled, and he died that we might be set free from the bondage and the penalty of sin. And we've got to pay, my brothers and sisters, that we can continue the momentum of the movement. 